welcome everyone here today. The Board of Supervisors of the County of Del Norte and the governing body of all other special assessment taxing districts for which said board so acts is now meeting in regular session. Only those items that indicate a specific time will be heard at the assigned time. All other items may be taken out of sequence to accommodate the public and staff availability. And we will have the Pledge of Allegiance led by County Council. I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Do we have the introduction of any new employees today? Yes. Ed? We have a new employee in the Parks Maintenance Department. His name is James Ball, and he started early last week. Good. You needed a, yes. another body. <laughs> Welcome, James. Welcome. Thank you. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you. Let's work hard. <laughs> Thank you. Any other ones? Seeing none, we will move on to um, report of any actions from closed session. Nothing to report. Thank you. At this time, I request any deletions, corrections, or additions from board members to the agenda at this time. Hearing none, we will receive reports from the county supervisors and Supervisor uh, Sullivan. Yeah, I'd like to delay. It. My notes are coming to the, to the board chamber, but I left them at the other office. So, so we can. Yeah, you can start at the other end. All. Supervisor Hemmingson volunteered to start. Sure. <laughs> I can start out. I uh, actually spent most of last week uh, at the uh, RCRC meeting, uh, which was uh, quite interesting. Uh, uh, there were several presentations put on, several, several panel presentations. Uh, uh, the first one started out with the sustainable communities, uh, the future of land use and housing and transportation, which um, was informative. Uh, Catherine Matthews uh, was part of that panel who used to be in Crescent City, so it was uh, nice to see her. Um, um, the, uh, I think one of the most important uh, panel presentations we had was on regulatory reform where there's a bill that's going through where um, agencies and commissions need to look over their uh, rules on how they um, administer um, their regulatory uh, position, I guess. Uh, uh, there are certain ways that they can do things. Uh, they can be pretty drastic about it, or they can work with whoever they need to work with to make sure they get things done. And, and so I think they're kind of maybe as uh, they're looking for a, an easing up of, of some of these real hard, hard uh, regulations. So. Hopefully, it um, has some substance behind it. Um, we also had a presentation on uh, the redistricting lines on how they were drawn, and that was pretty comical. But uh, uh, in short, uh, Delmar County kind of got the short end of the stick there. I had an interesting uh, um, presentation on the Federal Reserve on uh, how all that works. Not sure I understand it still, but. <laughs> It was uh, it was it was pretty interesting, really. Um, they also had a presentation on renewable energy. Uh, most of it was to, was uh, dealing with solar panels, um, which I don't think have quite made the grade yet on uh, cost effectiveness. Um, and then uh, we had a presentation on uh, challenges uh, facing the agricultural community, which uh, are going to be substantial coming up. Uh, most of the discussion, I think, was on county fairs. They've uh, discontinued funding of, uh, of local county fairs. And so there's going to be some real issues, uh, issues with that. But all in all, it was, uh, it was a pretty good, uh, pretty good meeting, uh, pretty informative. And then, of course, we get a chance to uh, um, talk to uh, other supervisors from other counties. Uh, uh, we all seem to have the, you know, similar issues. And how uh, each of us are dealing with those is, uh, is nice to to share those uh, those things. 
Uh, and that was about uh, about it for um, the RCRC meeting. We did have a LAFCO meeting yesterday where we uh, uh, approved the expansion of the Big Rock uh, Community Services District. And just for informational purposes, anybody who was interested in SB 369, uh, which is the Dungeness Crab Limited Entry and Trap Limit Bill, was signed by the governor yesterday. And that is a good thing for our community. That's about it for me. Thank you. Supervisor McClure. Yes, I had a relatively light week with uh, the senior board is still continuing to grapple with the um, loss of the energy program and the demand for repayment. And we're trying to work through that. We're not sure where it's going to go, but it's a fairly serious uh, predicament that the senior center is in. Um, I participated in the Redwood Park Association's Chamber Mixer, and it was very well received, and there were lots of people in attendance, and that was great. And in fact, there were a number of people, even though they have been raised in Del Norte County, had never entered the visitor center at the National Park headquarters. And so they were very excited about being there and, and seeing what kind of service is available. I have been making my way through the approximately 1,000 pages of the Coastal Commission's agenda for next week, and I can proudly say I'm almost three quarters of the way through it. And there's just, every time I read another one and then try to go and find the regulation and then the position and, and history of, this, of a certain kind of action, I just get deeper and deeper and deeper into information. So I'm. I'm learning a lot. It's a very steep curve, but it, um, it's very interesting to be looking at the issues statewide on the 1,100 miles of coast. I, um, Historical Society, we met. We have pellets, and thanks to the support of volunteers from the Sunrise Rotary, the um, fence is painted at the lighthouse, and the Tsunami Relief folks are going to help us do some painting out there and cleaning of the upper windows. So it's really coming together as a community effort. And that lighthouse is a community effort. And it's, I think, something that we want to make sure is safe and sound for the next 150 years. I talked with Chesbro's office. They are anticipating any day that the governor will sign the tsunami relief bill that will hopefully it will ensure that the harbor is made whole as far as having enough money for the recovery. And I um, participated in a gender review since I was the only supervisor in the county for several days. I, everyone was off to RCRC. And um, I also was contacted by the governor's office to inform that the Regional Water Control Board that's extremely important to us has four openings. And they're looking for someone who has any kind of water history, and that's a very broad um, category. And then there, are, I think, are three other openings, but people need to go on their website and see if it's something that they would like to participate in, because it's a vital activity for our community to be at that level at the Regional Water Board. And other than that, Oh, I, and Solid Waste met, and it was a quite lively meeting, but I think that we have, un, we are, have a better understanding of how public meetings work. Thank you. Supervisor Finnegan? Yeah, I had a couple of meetings, a lot fewer than usual, but uh, started with uh, California State Association of Counties. We have a call in with the officers every Wednesday. I uh, participated in that. Then had a meeting at the Family Resource Center with a few of us, with uh, Director Blatnick, the first five, uh, as well as the Executive Director, just talking about building maintenance and some of the uh, minor details of keeping a nice, beautiful building. On. The governor um, sat around the picnic table with the other officers of CSAC and, and talked quite candidly about the realignment that's taking place, and specifically about AB 109 and the commitment from the governor that as long as he is governor, he will not sign a budget that does not include adequate funding for all the programs that are coming down to the county that used to be state, state programs. So just not for AB 109, but also for all the mental health, social services, realignment issues, which is, you know, he says, as long as I'm here. And we said, well, yeah, we thank you, governor. What about the, what about the legislature? He said, well, 
disappointing that we don't have the constitutional amendments. We will continue to work with, for them. It will be a priority, but I guarantee you I will not sign a budget that does not adequately and fully fund realignment in AB 109. So Good. as long as he's governor, that commitment's there. In fact, there will be a press conference later in the week where he'll stand side by side with county officials and uh, reaffirm that in front of the television cameras. Then also went to the annual conference with RCRC, and Jerry spoke very well about it. Um, you know, I think is why he said something about Del Norte County, and is this gentleman was very uh, um, stuck on himself, um, I guess would be a good way to say it. There's other words. But the bottom line was is there wasn't many people that weighed in from Del Norte County, number one, and number two, Marin County severely weighed in and said that they had nothing in common with San Francisco County and did not want to be aligned with San Francisco County. Um, that uh, I guess they felt there was some competition. Now this is the same county that's wanted to kick us out of the Golden Gate Bridge District uh, for every year that we've been in existence. But uh, anyway, we'll make do with what we can there. there it's going to be challenged. It probably won't go anywhere, but um, uh, we just make do with the best we can. There is, uh, while at RCRC, uh, I also participated in the executive board meeting um, uh, on the last day. Some of the things that we had talked about that have not already been mentioned, the state responsibility areas, the SRA, there was a Senate bill that was going to address this. It never got out of committee. It would have been quite onerous and it would have cost every individual uh, in an SRA area, which is the vast majority of Del Norte County, significant amount of money. It was going to be uh, atrocious. So it came back to the recommendations and will be the recommendations of the Board of Forestry, which will have, um, if you're in a fire district, you get a discount. And, but they're still working through that. And um, the governor's mad because uh, the legislature didn't do its job. He thinks that the Board of Forestry is a little too weak and it didn't generate the $500 million that he needs in the budget. So he's got a big budget hole. So while the Board of Forestry may give us some relief this year, watch out for what the legislature tries to do after January. So it's something we're going to have to be diligent about. We talked about the state park closure, and while it sounded like a good thing where the state parks was willing to enter into MOUs and contracts with the local governments, the MOUs about yay thick and it's quite onerous. So you assume the responsibility, but you have to maintain it as the same way the state would rather than the way that you would. So the liability probably exceeds uh, and you could not afford to do it. The only thing that we would be affected by the state park closure is the uh, uh, coastal redwoods, which I believe is Mill Creek. Uh, so uh, anyway, there was a lot of other legislation update. Uh, there's an assembly bill, I believe it's 646, that has to do with labor negotiations. If it goes anywhere, it is going to be uh, very it's going to weigh very heavily on the county and any negotiations that take place and for any county, really. I believe that the governor did sign uh, the, the relief. Uh, okay. So uh, maybe it was going to be signed or had been signed. But anyway, that was the message that came down. There's some other legislation that tries to tweak something that's already working, and, and, and um, uh, it's going to be the detriment of Elnor County, the Workforce Board, uh, the local control, uh, the monies, the telling you how it's supposed to work is going to be handled out of Sacramento uh, rather than with our local workforce board. If it uh, comes to fruition, there's a Senate bill. Uh, I believe it's Assembly Bill 554 and Senate Bill 698, so we'll keep track of that uh, for you. There was a lot of end of session legislation. Um, some of it has been signed, some of it hasn't been signed. There's some 600 bills on the governor's desk. This may be the first time you have a governor that just allows bills to become law because he just chooses not to sign them. Um, so uh, they won't just actively veto something and won't affirm something. There's also, we talked about secure rural schools, there's some legislation out there that uh, is being proposed. Probably uh, we're thinking that that's not going to go anywhere because it's so thick and it goes back to formulas from 1988. What probably is going to happen is you're going to see some sort of extension. Um, continuing resolution, maybe for a couple of years, that will fund us until something can actually get worked out. Uh, we're keeping our fingers crossed on that because, as you know, we've already gone from about 3 point something million down to 2.2, 2.1, and to loop, for that to go down any further is going to impact 
our roads as well as the school districts. Um, without the only other thing I wanted to comment on is the status of the inmate fire crews. There is some price points that are being discussed between the Department of Forestry, Cal Fire, and uh, uh, the counties that will be proposed because under the AB 109 realignment, these are some people that are no longer going to be incarcerated. They're going to be under county control. Well, those are our fire crews. And unless uh, the counties are given sufficient money to contract back with the state, which it looks like might happen, you're going to lose that resource, uh, both locally as well as on a statewide basis. So looking forward to uh, something happening there. One last comment on AB 885. There will be finally some additional public hearings. This is the septic tank bill. The regulations that they're coming out with are going to be the ones that we um, facilitated having uh, in the decision. You'll have a tier zero, which is existing, which is tier zero, nothing, no change uh, for existing. Tier one would be uh, still local. It would be standard systems. And uh, it would be because our local plan was automatically approved by, if you have a local plan, then it's approved by the regional. Tier 2 would be something where the uh, regional board would have to approve the local plans. Tier 1 is where you just have to have a local plan. So basic, and then you have uh, three years to submit that plan. We already have one, I believe. And uh, finally, I, the most onerous one wouldn't apply to us. It would be septics that are uh, close to impaired uh, water bodies. So what we tried to do, we looks like we have accomplished. And, uh, but you can't give up yet. If there's a public hearing, we'll still participate, both CSAC, RCRC, myself, and hopefully members of the community. Other than that, um, I'm looking for Jim Bernard. He's not here yet, so I won't steal his thunder, uh, other than to say that uh, we were successful um, in getting a $200,000 small community development grant from the airport authority for marketing to try to improve um, ridership, but I'll let him speak to that when he gets here. But we've been after that for several years, and finally we're successful. Big deal. And that's it. Thank you. Well, one advantage of being the last speaker, I, we've all you. been to most of the meetings. Oh, not the oh, last. Yeah, yeah. I forgot you. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Um, just a real uh, couple things. Attended a North Deal meeting, which is uh, a meeting with Humboldt County and Caltrans and CHP to talk about projects, and they're still pushing forward on a lot of projects. Uh, it looks like Willits potentially will get funded in by the California Transportation Commission, the Willits Bypass. Um, that has just gone through. It's, it really is a strong argument to all the different agencies need to come to the table at the same time because what's held this up to this point, it got funded and it went so long, the Army Corps of Engineer held off on, on giving a permit because they didn't understand what was happening. Uh, Caltrans actually came up with a pretty innovative strategy because there wasn't enough land necessarily to mitigate. They enhanced certain wetlands in the area, which everyone thought was great, uh, except Army Corps of Engineer who didn't understand what was going on. So uh, uh, Mike Thompson's uh, office was evolved uh, quite a bit and uh, looks like Army Corps is in place now, but now they got to go back to the California Transportation Commission and re-ask for money again. So um, it's ridiculous uh, how far that, I mean, that's a really good project. If you've driven through Willits during the congestion period, it, they've got some serious traffic problems there. So uh, that was probably the no most notable thing on, on the, the meeting with uh, Caltrans down uh, in Eureka. Uh, attended the RCRC part, uh, RCRC conference, which stands for, for those of you that don't go, it's the Regional Council of Rural Counties. Um, so it's 31 counties that all, we have very similar problems and, and tasks and challenges that we all, all deal with. Um, one of the presentations, uh, there were two presentations, because I won't go over uh, Supervisor um, Hemmingson and Finnegan have mentioned a, a couple of the presentations. There were two in particular that um, caught my attention. One was that we had a presentation by one of on the redistricting commission and the gentleman who was the furthest north in California, uh, his name Stanley Forbes, lives in Yolo County. That's as far north representation wise that we got. Um, the, the frustrating thing is Marin County, um, they basically used the Golden Gate Bridge as a barrier. So Marin County got put in with us and so what's happening now is we are now going to end up with a brand new congressperson with no 
no clout at all back in D.C. And our biggest landowner in Delaware County is the federal government. So if you put the math there, we're, we're really been put in a bad, bad spot by the new redistricting lines, especially on the congressional level. Um, not to mention at the state level and some other things that have happened as well. So um, his, his logic was that, you know, that this is what the people of Delaware County wanted. Well, I know for a fact that there was only a handful of comments prior to the preliminary map. And I know there was a ton, the Farm Bureau and all kinds of different uh, people submitted comments after the preliminary maps. And uh, they just didn't listen, basically. And so, uh, <laughs> and they didn't hold any hearings up here either. The furthest north they went on the five was Reading. The furthest north they went on the, on the 101 was Santa Rosa. So, you know, there's, Delaware County really did not get a fair shake in this whole redistricting deal. Uh, the other one was we had an, uh, a presentation by Sandra Schubert, who's the Undersecretary for California Department of Food and Ag. Um, and they were talking about uh, the challenges facing California Ag. One of the things came up was the, uh, the, fair, uh, the fair situation with the money being pulled for all county fairs. Uh, we brought up the idea of, you know, that the local community would more than has always been very supportive of our local fair. Um, and some things are on the table. And one of the ideas was, you know, actually have the county take over the land that the fair's on and let us completely manage it and keep the state out. And, the, the, the group was pretty in favor of that. It, it, um, for our community, I think it, it would go really well. The problem right now, if you talk to any, anyone, uh, the challenges that the fair faces, a lot of times it's, going, it's dealing with the state, you know, with, with things that, that we need to do here. It's the whole process the state gets involved with. So the state doesn't really want to fund it, but they still want to kind of maintain control of it. So um, other than that, it, was, it is always good to get together with uh, other supervisors from from counties dealing with similar problems, they, they, um, there's some pretty innovative solutions when you get enough, enough people together. Um, and other than that, attended a party uh, for my uh, a good friend of mine, Jay Freeman, who's moving out of the community. Those of you who know Jay, Jay's going to be sorely missed. In, in 16 years, he's really put a lot into the community, and the, him and his family are moving closer to his side of the family uh, up in Washington. So we're going to be sorry to miss him. Um, also had a really uh, extensive conversation with Alma Cardenas, whose daughter died uh, back in 2008. And um, she uh, basically, I told her I would mention that we had the conversation. I talked to our uh, district attorney also. And, and um, it really is a tragic situation. And um, it, it's unfortunate that you know the time that was, was thought was going to be served didn't actually get served um, with the, the gentleman that, that killed her daughter. So um, it really a sad situation, and we're going to see what, what else we can do to help out on that. So other than that, that's it. Thank you. Well, like I was saying, it's nice being last uh, just because we, um, Supervisor Finnegan Sullivan and Hemmingson and I all attended the RCRC conference. Um, so I won't be redundant other than to say I, I did not attend the one session of, uh, on the redistricting just because I thought, what's the use? It's after the fact. Um, I, I felt like it would probably just be a bitch session, which we needed to complain. But anyway, I also attended Solid Waste Management Authority meeting. Um, and it was nice seeing Catherine Matthews. Uh, again, hadn't seen her for several years at the conference. and. The rest of the time, I would just make preparations for my trip because prior to the conference, I went and visited with my sister in Sun Valley. And that's about it. Thank you. At this time, we'll have public comment period. Members of the public may address the board on matters which are within the jurisdiction of the board. If you are addressing the board regarding a matter listed on the agenda, you may be asked to hold your comments until the board takes up that matter. Please limit your comments to three minutes. Thank you. Good morning, Supervisors. My name is Roger Gitlin. I live in Crescent City. I was witness to an incident in this chamber two weeks ago that stunned me. Supervisor Martha McClure essentially turned her back on a constituent by walking out of the room as he was delivering comments during the public comment section of this meeting. The subject matter is not of issue, 
nor is the political agenda of the speaker. This goes much deeper than this. Ms. McClure, I believe you were out of order when you interrupted the speaker during his three minutes of public comments. After you finish giving the speaker your opinion of the ad hoc committee to oversee solid waste, the speaker asks you politely for the opportunity to finish and listen to his comments. Astoundedly, I observed you push back your chair, stand up, and exit this chamber. After he delivered his remarks, you return to your seat. Ms. McClure, this action was rude, it was disrespectful, and above all, it was unconstitutional. I believe this behavior has no place in any public setting, and most certainly not by any publicly paid elected official. Certainly, we can disagree, but we don't have to be disagreeable. One supervisor stated to me, that we don't get to pick and choose who we listen to, indeed. The public has a constitutional right to speak its mind. That is clearly stated in the First Amendment. All of you on this board have taken an, an oath, a sworn oath, to uphold the Constitution. That is the American way. If I chose to speak at this podium that I believe the world is flat, I'm afforded 180 seconds to convince you of that, agree with me or not. I have the constitutional right to speak my opinion. Incidentally, I don't believe the world is fat, but I re flat, but I do reiterate that I have the right to express my opinion. Unfettered, uninterrupted, and in a setting that respects my right to free speech. Supervisor McClure, you owe that citizen an apology. You owe the citizens of Del Norte County an apology. Failure to acknowledge, acknowledge this inappropriate reaction of this incident, I would then ask the board, remaining four supervisors, to publicly censure this behavior. Failure to admonish this behavior tacitly approves it and it allows for future acts of disrespect. It also sets a poor example for our students who may very well inter interpret this real world behavior as mainstream acceptable. It is not acceptable to me. I would think anybody in this room, Del Norte County, the state of California, the United States of America. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kitlin. Next, Richard. My name's Richard Miles, and I too believe it's free speech. I'd like to state something that I think David knows. You can't yell fire in a theater. And get away with it. You may have your public opinions and somebody may say, are you taking your pills, Mr. Miles? But I still have the right to express my opinions on s certain subjects. Martha, I de de disagree with the comments the previous speaker spoke about because at times at, at city council meetings and at board of supervisors the subject matter gets intense and personal and over the last two years of a discussion that I will speak on later the discussion has been became heated I believe you had every right to get up and leave because after viewing that meeting, it was heated. I believe also that it's time for me to say some good things. I want to thank RHS the last two days, a number of our county buildings have been made into the best appearance that they have in the la last seven or eight years. 
I think Ed Foley and the crew from RHS should be thanked about that. A privately owned building that should be maintained by the landlord was cleaned up. It bothers me that a certain attorney that you rent from doesn't keep his property upkeep and something should be done about. So I'll reserve my right to talk about solid waste when the subject comes up. Thank you, Richard. My name's Ron Plachetti. I'm a constituent in Jerry's district. Uh, very briefly, uh, I attended a Delnort Solid Waste Management Authority meeting, and I was very disappointed in Catherine Murray's conduction, conduct in the meeting. She failed to allow people to, well, we were, while we were allowed to make public comments and ask questions, she failed to answer those questions, creating quite a bit of a disruption uh, especially when people were asking the question about the increase in costs that's going to be passed on after we were in the middle of on the agenda on the uh, downgrade of revenues from August and September they weren't doing as well and uh, I believe uh, several people asked questions about the uh, costs being and what would that do are we going to raise the rates etc cetera, etc cetera. and uh, this person responded that they don't feel like they, this outside the agenda, we're not gonna answer that question. Well, where else are we supposed to ask questions? And we had two Board of Supervisors meeting and at least Martha tried to answer some of the questions that were coming up and quell the audience, but uh, it ended up that the police got called because everybody was angry, and that should never have happened. When we have a public meeting and we have a question during the public comment meeting, it is your obligation, either whether you be sitting on the Board of Supervisors or uh, on the Del Solid Waste Management Authority to answer those questions the best you can. If you don't know the answer, you just say you don't know the answer. But to be told to shut up and sit down, well, I expect that maybe in you know uh, Chinese uh, uh, communist system, maybe where you're all a bunch of you know people that are not accountable except to the party, and that's not the way our uh, democracy works. We're supposed to be able to interact in these meetings and have answers to questions. So I would appreciate that the people uh, that are sitting on the board of, at, on the Delnort Solid Waste Management Authority that are on, in this room here, talk to the chairman of that uh, of the uh, Delnort Solid Waste Management Authority and advise them there is an obligation to answer questions because people are not uh, going to let you just uh, act indifferent because you work for us. Thank you very much. Thank you. My name is Dale Bowling. I'm a resident of Del Norte County. Uh, Martha, about 1991, my grandson and I began attending these meetings, and I've seen two of you here for many, many years. I've been to many board meetings. I've seen the board address many strenuous situations, and they've always come through pretty much in a shining way. Uh, I was not present for the um, incident that has been is under discussion here, and I'm rather glad I wasn't. Cause the board has always behaved in a very professional and uh, democratic, efficient manner. I've always been rather proud of them, but what I've heard, I'm glad that I wasn't here. I'm really at a loss to explain to myself how the stresses involved uh, resulted in in your action, Martha. The only thing I can think of is job burnout. I don't know what else. I know it's stressful. It's got to be. So maybe it's just overload. I don't know. But I have no other explanation for it. It can't be just simple disagreement. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Any other public comment? Seeing none? No, there is, Madam oh. Chair. Oh. Sorry, Mr. Bernard. That's quite all right. Good morning, Jim Bernard, Airport Director. Uh, here to advise you uh, that I was on the phone this morning with Congressman Thompson's office, and we have been awarded a small community air service development grant for $200,000 to use for marketing of our airline service locally. This is the fourth time we've applied for this <coughs> grant, and uh, it's through the Department of Transportation, not the FAA. But it's to be used to, for marketing purposes only, which is as an EAS or essential airline service subsidy airport, we can't solicit 
and other airlines to the market. We're subsidized for one airline and one airline only, and all we can do with this grant is use it towards marketing efforts, which is our intention. We've got a, we've done a market analysis, and we've got a consultant on board to administer this program, and we will be advertising more prolifically in the future. We figure that we lose to other airports about half of the people flying out of this region annually. So we inload, we load roughly 15,000 passengers a year. Another 15,000 go elsewhere for a variety of reasons, uh, cost, uh, availability, whatever. The other airports, Arcadia and Medford, also applied for this grant. Uh, to my knowledge, they didn't get it. Uh, they are losing airline service at those airports, so the availability is shrinking in the region. So it, that makes us more va in the service we have more valuable. So that's the uh, effort we'll be doing in the next year and a half is to uh, increase that marketing out there. So you'll be hearing more from that. Thank you. Any comments for Mr. Great, great job. I would just like to say, Mr. Bernard, that some of the reasons that people don't fly is, can you control our wind and rain and storms and fog? Fog, you know, it's hard getting home sometimes and, yeah. That's not too bad. Yeah, I just thought I'd throw in a little humor. Thanks. <laughs> As um, the weatherman, no doubt. Yes. <laughs> At this time, uh, any other public comment? I, I would like to comment on um, the events of the last meeting. And I explained this the, on Wednesday at the solid waste meeting, that I can hear arguments pro and con on items. My frustration level was that I was feeling that my argument was going to move to an ad hominem argument where I was going to be attacking the individual, the individual that I've worked with for years and consider a friend. And so I chose to say I need to recuse myself from this discussion. And that's what I said into the mic, and I left the mic. It wasn't an attempt to, squel to squelch someone's First Amendment rights. It was an attempt for me to make sure that I didn't personally attack someone that I consider a colleague and a friend. Thank you. Any other public comment? This time we will move on to uh, Public com or continue the public hearing, accept public comment, conclude the public hearing, and adopt the recommended 2011-2012 fiscal year budget and special district budgets by resolution as presented over the course of the budget hearings. Well, yes, that is straight from the government code. Uh, we've been at this now since April, and uh, I will try not to read this verbatim because there's too many pages of information, but the recommended budget was made available 10 days before the, the Board of Supervisors <laughs> took action to set the public hearing. So 24 days, the recommended budget has been out. Uh, it's been online for the last four days. Uh, essentially today, this is the final step in the annual budget process. And we're going to ask you to uh, take public comment and adopt the uh, fiscal year 2011-12 county budget. Uh, this budget maintains the policies and the uh, direction that the board has given to staff. Uh, it, in tough times, is taking taking a, a number of meetings, a number of uh, discussions, and a lot of creativity and uh, concessions by all. As the memo in here states, um, it was balanced through a combination of Staffing reductions, attrition, a reduction in service and supplies, increases in revenue where appropriate, reductions in budgets from the 24-hour mandated facilities, concessions by the employees, concessions by department heads, elected officials. Um, and it also, um, one of the uh, ways that was assisted was to utilize some revenue funds that were in a uh, special revenue fund to offset another revenue fund that was obviously having troubles. So as we went through this process, we sat down uh, in April, started our first round of budget meetings with individual departments, went line by line. Um, sometimes when you start with a $2.4 million worst case scenario, taking $1,000 out of somebody's budget sounds 
uh, a little difficult, but um, there were other concessions made by department heads, reorganizations in the county council's office, reorganizations in the clerk recorder's office. Those are all um, ways of, of reducing the costs and uh, allowing us to balance a budget. Um, staffing attrition included the administration budget. Uh, there were positions lost in probation, positions lost at the sheriff's department, and uh, as such, you know, there are difficulties in going through this process that affects people's lives. But as of today, the recommendation before you would be to conclude the public hearing and adopt the recommended 2011-2012 fiscal year final budget and special district budget by resolution as presented over the course of the budget hearings. Adopt a resolution fixing tax rates for fiscal year 11-12 as required by government code. Adopt a resolution setting appropriation limits for fiscal year 11-12 and establish one deputy district attorney 123 position for the purpose of prosecuting Pel cases at Pelican Bay State Prison effective the first pay period in January. I would like to thank uh, all those that have been involved in this process, uh, anticipating that this is, uh, this is the start of the next, uh, the next step, which will be looking at the mid-year projections here in about two months. Um, budget, the individual budgets will be reviewed monthly to make sure that everybody's staying within their projections. And, uh, you know, essentially what we see here is a, a very lean budget, but a budget that will work for the uh, constituents of the county and uh, continue on the policies of the board. Thank you. We Is there any public comment on these items? Seeing none, I will bring it back to the board for discussion. Prior discussion, I'd move to approve the recommendations. Second. I have a motion and a second. Which includes uh, concluding the public hearing. Okay. Um, my, my only comment is I will support this, obviously. I made the motion. Um, I've always prided Del Norte County that we've been able to lead in areas where other people haven't. Maybe it's because of our size, maybe it's because we work so well as a partnership, maybe it's because we've learned to do so much with so little in the past. And I think we will continue to do that in the future. We had an opportunity to, sh to lead in the area of employee contribution to our retirement fund, something that we don't do now necessarily uh, to the degree that it should be. The employer pays the majority of that, if not all of it in some cases. The governor and the legislature have been working on it and they're at odds and they may come to some resolution in two years, who knows, because that's how long this, the contract is going to be for. Because we all did not agree, because the retirement system says that the rules are that either everybody contributes or nobody contributes, we were unable to do that. And this board said early on as elected officials that we wanted to be part of that 100% contribution. Um, 100% towards, I think it was a 3 or 4% contribution. And because we couldn't get there, this board is choosing on an individual basis to do our 4% contribution towards our insurance fund. Um, so, yes, we're contributing. It's just I wish we could have stood together and been leaders, and hopefully we can do it in the future. Thank you, Supervisor Finnegan. Any other comments? I would have, oh, so. I would just sorry. like to thank Jay and Clint and Neil and all of the department heads and all of the employees in the county because it's a remarkable job to have a balanced budget in this time and to have a balanced budget that didn't drastically cut services to our community. And so kudos to a job well done and to the member um, associations for coming together and trying to figure out a way that we can get through these next two years because hopefully the economy is going to turn around or we're going to start charging people on highway 101 when they come in and out to make some yeah. revenue or something but thank you for a job well done i'd like to also thank all of you that were involved good job i agree long too long of a process yeah, but uh, was. But uh, in, the, in the end, it, uh, it always comes out. We felt your frustration. Yeah, you guys did a, did a great job, but that, my only fear is that it's, we're going to have a discussion again oh, yeah. where it's going to get deeper. 
Yeah, I, I well, thank you on behalf of the budget team and, and the others that have been involved in this. Um, Joey Young was also a key part of our four-person budget team on the personnel end. Uh, but it also involves all of the staffs of the auditor's office and a lot of administration and, and different people. But um, obviously, as we talk about employee concessions, um, all of the employees uh, will be affected by this. We appreciate that. The, uh, in, in addition with the, all of the elected officials and the department heads and assistant department heads, which are all, if anybody under, doesn't understand this, there are negotiating sides of, uh, for each one of those groups. So as we went through the process, um, yeah, the pain was felt by a number of people, and uh, it's unfortunate. These are difficult times, and they could have been much more difficult if the state hadn't uh, backfilled the public safety money that was lost to the sheriff's office. And that is something that I think this governor has has stated that he was going to continue, as, as Supervisor Finnegan had mentioned, even with one, uh, AB 109, which is public safety also, he is uh, dedicated to that. And if that continues, um, that will be a, a godsend. However, if, he, if something wavers, and then there could be some significant issues in public safety. And that could be said for a number of different departments. It could be affected by the, the money that comes from the state. I know we all feel that as we pay our taxes, it pays for all of our services, but that's not necessarily it. A um, very small amount of our taxes actually come back to Del Mar County. There have been a couple of encouraging uh, signs. Uh, there is uh, some yield tax coming back this year that was uh, beyond what last year was, so there's some activity in that, in that market, and it looks like it's going to continue. So uh, the county does receive some yield tax, and that, that will be nice. As we go through this process, we hope that we're able to recoup some of the money that the state of California owes us by, by law. And as we go through that, we'll work with them. Um, but it has been a long process, and I know it's frustrating when the Board of Supervisors comes in and sees that half of their staff isn't available on most of the days from April through at least June. And, uh, and it, I don't see it getting any shorter. I see it getting longer, if anything. So we'll be looking at it in mid-year, starting in December. Thank you, Jay. Okay, I have a motion and a second on the floor for these four items, and that included the uh, closing of the, the uh, public hearing. Jeremy, would you pull the vote, please? Supervisor McClure? Yes. Supervisor Hemmingson? Yes. Supervisor Sullivan? Yes. Supervisor Finnegan? Yes. Supervisor McNamer? Yes. Okay, consent agenda. Do we have any... Um, uh, well, Madam Chair, I did have a question. We need to, yes. I think we need to pull item 13 for discussion because there's no names attached to who we're appointing. Right. So I think we need to put that under general government and have a discussion. And I'd like some discussion on item number nine um, having to do with the workforce space. Sure. How can I help? Um, is, is this part of the stuff that's going to be funded differently? Want to pull this no, that's all. We're, we're just realigned. Discussing. You mean realigned funding? Well, uh, I just didn't. I hear something about the workforce um, center being uh, the, the, done by the state. The, the decisions are going to be made at the state level rather than at the local level, for the most part, towards funding. I'm not, not, not doesn't no. apply to this. Doesn't apply to this. Not, not to this funding. This is a Cal Works <clears throat> okay. funding, public assistance that, funding. Yeah. That was my concern. Was uh, and and do we have escape clauses in in these? We absolutely do in oh. every one of our contracts. That was only thirty happened. days. Thanks, Gary. <laughs> to clarify, and we can follow up with this in a future agenda. Nortec is going to be affected. Yeah. That that process that has worked so well. Yeah. yeah. We will pull item number 13, and um, I have a motion and a second to accept the consent agenda. No, I don't. No, move to approve. Oh. With item 13 first. I'm just anxious to move. Second. I have a motion and a second. Do I have any public comment on the consent agenda? <clears throat> Seeing none. Jeremy? Supervisor Sullivan? Yes, minus number nine. I've got a conflict of interest on that. Supervisor Finnegan? Yes. Supervisor McClure? Yes. Supervisor Hemmingson? Yes. Chair McNamer? Yes. Um, do 
we want to uh, address item number 13 at this time or move sure it? sure okay uh, madam chair I would as chairperson of the uh, the JPA um, I throw out a suggestion and also as I forgot to mention that maybe I did reappointed uh, by the National Association of Counties to chair the airport committee under the Transportation Committee of the National Association of Counties. So um, I would suggest that we keep the same membership that we had before um, and re-up. I think that we've done a great job there. I have a question regarding the alternate. Who is the alternate? Martha. And the only, Martha, I, I'm going to throw a suggestion out there and I think you'll concur with it because you are on the Coastal Commission. And, and cuz that there's definitely going to be some issues that's going to come before you yeah, there. Right. So I'd like you to be able to vote on them at the Coastal Commission rather than have a conflict. So I would uh, ask uh, and I'm going to toss it between Supervisor Sullivan and, and Supervisor McNamer to be appointed to the alternate and Supervisor Hemmingson and myself to remain as the uh, delegates. And I think just for po point of clarification and I haven't checked with Coastal Council or County Council, but I think that when an issue of the airport comes forward on the Coastal Commission, I will probably be required to recuse. But I don't know that answer. Check that out. I will check. Yeah. But I think that that's that why we supported it. you. We do wanted you, a positive I, vote. Do you, have, um, do you have to recuse yourself on anything that happens in Delaware? No. I don't think so. But this, because it's under the control of, well, it's not. It may not be because it's a no. regional airport authority board. Right. But I will find out. Okay. Great. But possibly because of the budget. And Supervisor Sullivan. I, I, I would be glad to serve it. I have no conflict like at this point. I would, yeah, I would, I would love to you do that. Thank you. That's all for you. Thank you, Chair McNamara. You're welcome. Okay, so that is the only question that you had the reason for pulling. Right, well, just to put the names in there. So, yeah. so I would make that motion with, with those stipulated. Okay. So you're, you're now making the motion for this resolution? Yes. Okay. And I would second. I have a motion and a second. Jeremy, pull the vote, please. Supervisor McClure? Yes. Supervisor Hubbingson? Yes. Supervisor Sullivan? Yes. Supervisor Finnegan? Yes. Chair McNamer? Yes. Do we have a resolution? Yes, we yeah. do. And I gave that to oh, Supervisor yeah. Sullivan to read. This is a resolution for. The proclamation. Oh, yes, excuse me, proclamation. In uh, recognition of domestic violence awareness. Item six on the agenda. Yes. Okay. Uh, proclamation of the Delaware County Board of Supervisors, um, Domestic Violence Awareness Month, October 2011. Whereas domestic violence, once a secret kept among families, is now recognized as a serious crime in our community. And whereas domestic violence has severe consequences for survivors, their children, and families, and impacts on the quality of life of the entire community. And whereas stopping the cycle of this crime requires not only the resolve and courage of survivors, but also support and involvement from all of us. And whereas enhanced education, prevention, and intervention help increase public awareness of the severity and extent of domestic violence. And whereas violence in the home is a problem that affects every socioeconomic level in our society, occurring in wealthy and disadvantaged neighborhoods, and involving the employed and unemployed. And whereas domestic violence is generally learned and passed down from one generation to another, and whereas our society pays a high price for domestic violence through homelessness, increased crime rates, drug and alcohol abuse, increased medical expenses and business losses, and whereas during the month of October, local, state and national domestic violence agencies will sponsor events to help us focus public attention on the problem of domestic violence. Now, therefore, the Delaware County Board of Supervisors hereby proclaim the month of October 2011 as Domestic Violence Awareness Month. We encourage all residents to dedicate themselves to learning about reducing domestic violence and violence against women in Delnor County. We further encourage all citizens of our community to support rural human services, Harrington House, uh, domestic violence programs in our, and domestic violence programs in our community, or in our county. This is this the 27th day of September 2011. Jody Hoon, Harrington House. So speaking on behalf of the Harrington House team, I want to thank the Board of Supervisors for this opportunity. October is nationally acclaimed as Domestic Violence Awareness Month, 
and every year Harrington House puts on special events to bring awareness to the crimes of domestic violence. As we've done for many years now, we fill the town with purple bears, ribbons, cards, and posters. As, and this is all to bring our community together once again to stand in awareness that domestic violence is no longer acceptable. Together, we really are stronger in any domestic violence in our community. Sorry. Uh, last year alone, Harrington House provided 2,848 bed nights to domestic violence victims and their children. We provided domestic violence advocacy and services for an additional 591 non-sheltered people. We provided 9,304 meals to families experiencing domestic violence, performed over 6,310 individual and group counseling sessions, provided legal advocacy and restraining orders to over 307 people who experienced domestic violence. This year, thanks to our community and its support, we were able to add an expanded prevention program with a full-time prevention advocate dedicated to prevention, a tribal legal access center that works with our local <coughs> tribal courts, a financial independence program that assists DV survivors in finding jobs and building their knowledge and confidence about managing their budgets, um, and unfortunately, we're still affected by our unpredictable state budget each new fiscal year. However, we are very hopeful and grateful to our community. Thank you. Thank I also you, have, Jody. Thank you. I have invites for our Cookies for Cops celebration, which is happening October 6th. I'd like to hand them out. I would just like to say I had attended one of the Cookies for Cops before, and it was a good. great little get -together. Cookies are good. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> well been there. I would just like to thank Harrington House and RHS that um, in my other life as a school teacher, I have had the benefit of having a prevention specialist who is a young woman who is very close to the age of the students that I teach. And her message to them is much more effective than my message to them. And it, um, I see little glimmers of understanding of the significance of controlling relationships. And the kids are starting to put it together because of that advocacy. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's Cassie Johnson. And yes. she's at Juvenile she's Hall today, or she'd be here. So thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Joe. OK, we will move on to item number 14, approve the expenditures of Title III funds. Move to approve. Second. second. I have a motion and a second. Jeremy. Public comment. Oh, Sup sorry. Do we have any public comment on this item? Hearing none, back to the board. Do we have any comments from board members? Mm -hmm. None, Jeremy. Supervisor Finnegan? Yes. Supervisor Sullivan? Yes. Supervisor Hemmingson? Yes. Supervisor McClure? Yes. Chair McNamer? Yes. Thank you. Item number 15. Authorized County Administrative Officer to pursue a tire derived product grant for the purposes of providing recycled rubber much mulch, excuse me, for a new playground at Del Norte Wellness Center. Move to approve. Second. I have a motion and a second. Public comment? Yes. The only question I have, and I was unaware this was going to be part of the agenda today, but why are we only asking for this rubber product that's made out of used rubbers for playgrounds? only for the wellness center because I'd like to point out right next door you have two playgrounds that could use this material you also have a head start school in Peterson Park that could use this material you have the city could use this material in kids town and I personally know another area that David is familiar with and that's the play area at first five where the kids go out and play that needs this material too 
I think it's short-sighted for this body to support only one agency in this county. Thank you, Richard. Any other public comment? Hearing none, I will bring it back to the board. Could I respond to that one just to add some clarification? Yes, please. This was a request from the uh, Open Door Community Health Clinic specifically for the new playground that would be built by them. Um, this will allow them to put more features into their playground in that area. There's a statement in the report that says it is understood that the county could request and possibly utilize mulch in the future in excess of the amount that's been requested today. Presently, the uh, playgrounds that the county controls or has in their uh, parks don't necessarily have a need for that right now, but we would look at that in the future. Of course, you have to clean those chips out and put them somewhere else. And there's, there's areas that we could utilize them. Probably the ropes course at Florence Keller is the, is the prime example. But um, I don't believe it's short-sighted on the board's behalf, or on, on behalf of the board, because there is the ability to go out and look at more mulch in the future. This is a program that's made available to counties and cities but uh, this was a specific partnership request that we, res that we responded to. Thank you. Any other questions? From no, that's I'm glad Jay interceded there. Thank you. Thank you. So I, did, I have a motion and a second on this item. I move to approve the um, process for the grant. Oh, I, I, I we already did. Oh, no, we already did. Oh, I think she seconded. Did I? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Supervisor Hemmingson? Huh? Do you want me to pull the vote? Please. Okay, Supervisor Hemmingson? Yes. Supervisor Sullivan? Yes. Supervisor Finnegan? Yes. Supervisor McClure? Yes. Supervisor McNamer? Yes. Thank you. Moving on to item number 16, hold a discussion and take possible action regarding the formation of a new solid waste ad hoc committee to be composed of two. City Council members, two members of board supervisors, with the understanding that at least one member from each entity shall not sit on the solid waste management authority board and appropriate appropriate legal counsel to restructure or dissolve the solid waste management authority. Uh, do you have any comments? Because this this was added. It's just a point of clarification that this item came back to the board. Um, I was able to bring it back to the board because of the <coughs> affirmative position in which I took the original vote. That's a requirement of bringing items back. And I believe that within the um, Brown Act and looking at a re the reasonable man theory that a person reading the previous agenda would have question of what the action, of how those two actions were going to equate with one another. So I thought that it should come back and be properly agenda sized and then the vote can go wherever the vote goes. Well, I guess then I'll speak to that, because I was curious as to why it was on the agenda, because we had had a discussion about it, and it was unanimous on a pulled vote. Um, and I see there's a lot of people in the audience that are, and I'm going to assume that it's pro, con, in between, wherever you want to go with it. This is not a discussion about whether to do away with solid waste, or whether to reorganize solid waste, or whether solid waste is doing a great job and deserves a raise. Right. Okay is what this is about is there was an ad hoc committee that was formed to look at a government without including the two governments. And that was a severe oversight that shouldn't have happened. So the discussion was to include the city in a discussion regarding a JPA in which the city is a member government and allow them also to uh, put some people at large on there if they so choose. So it was a recognition of another government. It was an oversight the first time that that committee didn't catch, and I saw this as a, has nothing to do at this point on restructuring or any of, or doing away with or giving accolades, simply doing it right. Thank you, Supervisor Finnegan. Any other comments from board members? No, I concur. I, well, I do have <coughs> um, a comment just because um, I was a little frustrated um, by the end of that meeting, and I walked out of here thinking to myself, what the heck did I just vote for another ad hoc committee for? I feel like it's more important at a city county meeting for the two entities to discuss whether or not 
they feel the need to form another committee. I, I feel like the drug or the task force, the ad hoc committee itself, the grand jury, there were no recommendations to look further into whether or not to dissolve or form another committee. I, I didn't see any anything from any of these three things that that said that we need to look further into this. I, I just I don't understand the need for another ad hoc committee. Well, Madam Chair, not, but, sorry to interrupt, but yeah. um, you always have the discretion to hold the city county meeting and put it on the agenda, and I'm sure the ad hoc would hold off uh, having a meeting if that's the case. I, uh, I, I would think like I to definitely that because they discussion. have to be involved. Mm -hmm. we, yeah. we can't do anything on our own. We need yeah. to have them as involved as we are. Yeah, to, 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 to kind of dovetail with what Supervisor Finnegan was saying, we did extend an offer to the city yes. at that point, and uh, the mayor at that point chose not to appoint anybody. Um, this would be specifically to, to put some of the changes recommended by, by the ad hoc into place. So, but coming back to the original thing, we voted on it last week. Um, it was county council said everything legally was followed. So at this point, but I would, if you're, if you're willing to hold a meeting before this ad hoc meets, I'd be, that would be great. Get all both boards in place to discuss the item. Well, like I said, I, I believe they have to be as involved Absolutely. as we are. They're, have they to. are the JPA, part of the JPA. Um, and I've just never heard anything from any of them to push for uh, another ad hoc committee or anything. But that's um, something that was passed. If anybody would like to uh, do anything differently or we'll just. Um, I, I, I'm asking that there be a renewal of the motion and a, and a polled vote followed prior, I mean following public input and public discussion because I want to add to the discussion of an ad hoc. Um, I find that ad hocs, because of the nature of an ad hoc, they're single subject. And not only are they single subject, but they are um, timed. And the most important part of an ad hoc is that they're not required to be agendized or public. And there are no minutes in an ad hoc. And I think that if this subject matter is going to take up, it needs to be removed from an ad hoc committee to a standing committee. And I'm not even sure I would support a standing committee um, because I believe that it has been looked at, re-looked at, and it's a working entity that uh, is doing great service to our community. So with that, I would ask that the, I, I feel that the previous vote looking at the Brown Act, and I know that County Council said, well, it does say possible action, but I'll use the example that if we had a item on the agenda and it said beach improvement, and then the county voted to approve a new hotel, how would you know that was going to be there? So I don't believe that when the last, when the last agenda sized uh, was to receive at, do you have the exact language, Jeremy? It was to receive the ad hoc committee, the solid waste response to ad hoc. And so to receive a report is different from moving to the next step and having yet another ad hoc committee that was specifically detailed to dissolve or restructure. So I'm asking this board to publicly, I, w I would like to withdraw my affirmative vote from that if it's going to stand as presented, but I would like to see the discussion re revisited. Thank Supervisor you. McClure, did you want me to read the actual action? Yeah, the actual, <laughs> how it was presented on the agenda without, yeah. Uh, receive, review, and take possible action on the Del Norte Solid Waste Management Authority's response to the Solid Waste Ad Hoc Committee report. Thank you. So I, I believe that that is big enough to meet the criteria that a general description on an agenda requirement according to the Brown Act of um, Chapter 4, Section 1A uh, states that the general description is to inform an interested member of the public ab about the subject matter under, under consideration so that they can determine 
whether to monitor or participate in the meeting of the body. So I, I, you know, I think that it's good to have process, and I'm not afraid of process. I have no prediction of how pro this process is going to come out on the other end, but I just think that process should be honored. Just want to, I guess, a, to have a discussion that's not all inclusive always wreaks havoc, um, and I don't. I think there's probably people on all sides that felt that they didn't have proper input. So what would be your recommendation then to allow for, without a free-for-all, for allowing a, a vetting of the issues with both sides, starting with the members of that governance, which is the city and the county, uh, as well as the public at large person? What's, I don't think it's to keep beating up the city individually or the county individually. Mm -hmm. And obviously, it probably isn't to have that discussion at a solid waste meeting. And if an ad hoc is not the proper venue, then so be it. If a standing committee is what you're advocating for, I'm fine with that. If calling a meeting of the city and the council and the board of supervisors together, that's fine, except then I guess you're sort of excluding the at large member. I don't know where that falls. But I, hey, I'm game for whatever the best means of communication to talk about the subject at hand rather than the polarization of the what ifs, then let's have that conversation and throw something out there. Martha, you, you brought it up. What would you, uh, I mean, I'm game for would anything. you like to have public how, how, how is it best to enhance the communication of the community so they can fully vet this so we don't have to keep seeing this every six months or every year or every other year? And I'm probably the wrong person to ask because I but you feel that it has forward. been vetted. Okay. Um, I feel it has been vetted with, um, you know, since 1996, uh, with the first franchise agreement, the discussion of solid waste was moving. And I think then in 1999 or 2000, there was a movement afoot of people, you know, we can remember the infamous toilet sign and all of that kind of thing. And all along the way, there has been this review that has happened. And we keep coming back that here we have close to a $6 million enterprise that has about between 10 and 12% of those dollars go back to the authority to oversee this, this, these two major franchises. And not only do they oversee those two major franchises, that money also allows for the parks to have the trash picked up. It allows for the county, I think it's $15,000 and $15,000 for the city to have their trash at their events picked up. It, um, has do it does hazardous waste. It has set a standard statewide for buyback programs, including our fluorescent program, our battery program. We're working on a sharps program. And so it's a, it's a, it's a community service that's not casting taxpayer dollar in relationship to the county budget or the city's budget. And when we compare ourselves to our communities, to our neighbors, our rates are cheaper. See, and I'm gonna just- so, And I know you don't wanna hear that well, part, but well, it's that's like, because, I feel like we've been vetted. Okay, I just and want us- the grand jury has- I want us to have some consistency in our arguments if the discussion so we don't violate the Brown Act, is supposed to be what is agendized, which is the discussion of a formation of committee, then let's not us lead that discussion okay. down the path of whether solid waste is good, bad, or indifferent. Let's be consistent. Okay, what? then I, I mean, you wanna hear from the public first or you want a motion and then discussion? Oh, I don't care. I'll be glad to put a motion forward. I don't know if I'll get a second, but I move that the county not form an ad hoc committee at this time in relationship to solid waste as, as solid waste has been vetted. I would second that motion with the recommendation that we hold a city county meeting and put this on the agenda. Okay, you can do that separate from this motion. All right. Just, so that now we have the discussion identified for the public. The discussion is now going to be should we have an ad hoc committee or should we not have an ad hoc committee, right? I think so. Well, the ad hoc committee to include that other governance was the issue. Yes. Okay. Well, that was my, that they was were, my issue. I don't know. They were invited the first time and chose not to participate. Well, I think it's time. 
So now it's kind of tough. Jeremy, could you read that motion back, please? No? <laughs> Can you please restate your motion? <laughs> I'm a little confused over here. Too. My motion is that the county choose not, not, that the county elect not to appoint an ad hoc committee to dissolve or restructure solid, Del Norte County Solid Waste Management Authority at this time as it has been fully vetted. And I would second that without any additions to my comments. Okay, I'll, I'll clean it up. Jeremy, would you pull the vote? Oh no, don't we have oh. to have discussion? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm leaving you guys out. <laughs> Public comment. Richard. Might as well serve this. Yeah, I can. I'm getting dirty looks already. Richard, may, may I stop I'm you gonna just be for nice. a, no, I want to stop you just for a moment. I would like to ask how many people in the audience plan on speaking. And if we There's don't. There's a sign-up well, sheet, right? Yeah, if, if we have more than three or four, then we need to have a sign-in sheet. And we need to keep our comments to three minutes. Make your comment in, regarding, or in regards to the motion, and that is whether or not to have an ad hoc committee and to take it to the city. I, I, I don't want any speakers turning around and addressing the audience. They I will try to be to nice, board. Leslie. Thank you, Richard. Why don't you let people My personal. Yeah. Wait, wait. I won't. Let, let everyone finish signing in before you Okay. Um, they might want to listen. What? Parliamentary procedure, what would happen if there was a second motion put on the table before the first motion was voted on? Then the last motion put on the table is voted on first. Okay. So I'm going to put the subsequent motion before the board because I think it's somewhat confusing as to what the motion is. The discussion surrounded whether or not to have a committee with the, with the city, the other governance, as part of that discussion. The motion on the table is not to have a meeting, a committee at all. So in keeping with the agenda, I would submit a motion to have, to mandate that the city be included in the discussion, in the committee. That's what I thought we were talking about here, is whether to in include the city, whether they've been asked in the past or not whether to have representative government have that discussion. Are you talking about on the ad hoc committee? Yeah, or that's what we're talking about. That's what we're talking about because if. So are you making a motion that you establish an ad hoc committee to establish, to in accordance with the city and the county? I mean, the, you're, you're not the, talking about overriding this, this motion. And I have a question, a parliamentary question. Well, you asked me that a question. I think that the second, I would have to go look it up, but I think that the second motion has to have a way that it is, it can't be just another motion. It has to, it has to have a hierarchy of that motion for a I'm, reason. I'm just trying not I to. So, but I need to double check. Yeah, yeah. It, you can't just. That's fine. I was, you know, I'll withdraw the motion. I'm just trying to get to where the public has proper input at a forum where both governances are represented. That's all. I think it and will I think that move in that direction. I think but that, your motion is just going to keep fuel to this fire. Okay, Richard. Okay. Then let it come first. I would like to give this board a little history because I think it's important. And I personally want to say, as a city resident, what disappoints me is that this county has an instrument that it hasn't used in a number of years, and that's the Solid Waste Task Force. It hasn't met in a number of years. It hasn't functioned as a committee of the county. What we had, we, I believe there are issues that need to be addressed. I hate to say this, I don't think another ad hoc committee is going to solve anything 
because you, you have thrown up a cloud of dust and there's a number of a number of people in this community on two sides that are beginning to lack confidence in a in a, an authority what needs to be done is not another ad hoc committee you have two members of my city that serves on the solid waste authority you have two members of this body that serves on the solid waste authority both of those people and their alternates have a legal responsibility to come back at their meetings and to let know their contention the people that elect them to office and the rest of the boards the council and the board what in hell's going on that hasn't been done my suggestion is an alternate suggestion that this body needs to do some, something before you have a meeting of my city and my county because we know they're all months away I'd like to suggest that each of you as having supervisory districts look at the vacancies and there are a number of vacancies on that solid waste task force that you appoint new members to that task force have them hold public meetings with representatives from the city on there because there are people that have districts in the city so that they that can hear there. the can I finish Leslie so that they can hear the public they can come back to this board this board can meet with the city and let's solve this problem point taken Richard thank you very much next one Jeremy. Chairman, if I may interrupt yes. for a second, I do have an answer to that parliamentary question. Um, according to Rosenberg, it would be the last motion to be voted on first. Sorry. Um, according to the Rosenberg rules, it would be the last motion to be to be ruled, to be voted on first, and then the previous motion, if that one would be still standing after the last motion. Just for some clarification, I did look that up. Oh well, I knew that. But doesn't it have to vote? Uh, it doesn't specifically state how it needs to be related to okay. the okay. previous one. Thank you. Mr. Perfetti. Hi, I'm Ron Placchetti. You know, I'm a county resident. I'd like to say this thing has been become extremely politicized, this whole thing. And here's, let me give you a little outgoing history here about what happened here. Uh, the Del Norte Solid Waste Management Authority created this solid waste management uh, facility for about $5 million. And since that time, our dire the director originally made claims that we're going to go to zero waste management, trumpeted it on the MSW magazine, the flagship, flagship uh, periodical for the solid waste management industry. And then, of course, it's not true. The Del Norte Solid Waste Management then arranges a uh, contract for a 25-year deal with uh, Hambro's uh, Waste Solutions when the norm for a government contract is like eight years okay for this kind of thing then what we've seen then after Martha McClure promised that we're not going to see all these big increases it's going to be affordable we saw it go from $65 a ton $116 a ton now and you know, I just went down there yesterday now it's $134 a ton 13 and a half percent increase in one year now to further reward the Del Norte Solid Ways and Management New Alliance uh, back in the political part of this thing is that they try to push Hambro's waste systems and kick out Del Norte Disposal Company, it's now called Recology, uh, by filing a bunch of complaints at the last minute and trying to say that this guy, uh, Tommy Sparrow's company, wasn't doing its job to put reward Hambro's, who, by the way, is one of the largest political contributors to Martha. Okay. Ron, can I interrupt you now, just for a second? Hold on, you can shake your head. I, I know you, they received donations from that, uh, those, that group of people and Mr. Hambros. Now, 
I would just like to say we need to have a unbiased, fair hearing between the, both the city the constituents and the uh, county constituents and find a way to economize this thing and get the politics out of it and put forward some sort of reasonable solution where we have control of our costs. Uh, we don't need to see people get uh, letters of, uh, that came here the other day. I got a call from a dairyman who got a, a, a certified letter, had to go down to the post office on a Saturday and pick up a letter about a Sharps program. And that's a waste of money and a waste of time. But, but okay. we're getting off point. Okay, I'll let me get Rob. back to the point then. Uh, I think the whole thing is we need to really seriously look in an unbiased manner, get the politics out of it, and try to find a way to uh, economize what we're doing here and not make this so political that somebody's getting a paycheck so we can't get rid of it. Well, we need to look at it because we've seen significant increases in costs passed on to the people at a time that can least afford it. But we're here to discuss whether or not to have another ad hoc committee or not. Well, I support having some sort of committee. That's the way we would discuss that that's what the motion is on the floor. On another motion? Oh, if David makes another motion, I suppose we would have to let everyone speak again. Lace Gill. Good afternoon. <coughs> um, I'm here on behalf of the line staff workers at the Solid Waste Agency um, who came to me some time ago when the first ad hoc committee was formed in great anxiety about their jobs. Um, I attended a couple of the ad hoc committee meetings and observed the process and listened to the comments. Um, and I have observed in the community a perception that this is personal and that it's about the people who are running the agency as administrative staff, and it's not about the merits. And if there is gonna be a process of discussion about whether we need a solid waste agency, the city has to be a part of it, or it's just grandstanding. Uh, I believe in good government. Uh, the union members who work there and are working hard and performing a great service, they believe in good government and they believe that they're doing a good job. Thank you. Thank you. Irene Tynes. Hi, Irene Tynes. Um, Hi. I, I know all of you. You know my past, past mayor of Crescent City, council member, um, nurse, currently the president of the Family Resource Center board, which I'll tell you makes me feel so good, and what we do for our community. Um, I'm here today because felt like as a city resident and I'm an empowered city resident I know what goes on at the JPA I know what goes on in the government that I felt like the county was talking divorce or something and I hadn't heard about it it was just this I heard about this that there was going to be a meeting and that you didn't like this committee that we're all joined together on and I personally got my feelings hurt as a city resident that I wasn't informed or asked. And I think that I understand how it gets away from you up here. I understand that you have these ideas, you listen to constituents, you say things out loud, and you say things out loud, and then the ramifications. And I'm a ramification. I really am. And today is Tuesday, and today is my trash day. And I am so happy with my service. So for the environment, for the Tynes family, I don't believe that there's, we should do anything to change my service. Um, and I just ask that you kind of be careful how you say these things out loud. I appreciate all that you do. I appreciate, the, the, I, I was overwhelmed by your staff reports. Overwhelmed, what you all have to do and all the committees that you sit on, especially compared to the city. I mean, you are out there at the state, RCRC. RCRC, I, how many committees are you on? And you're in leadership with RCRC. And how you're protecting our children at first five, which is a political battle daily. How you sit on the Coastal Commission. 
um, how you're protecting, you're always looking at the money, bottom line. So I appreciate it. I think that this body should exist. I think it, it's less work from you. It's one thing that they can, can, they can specifically decide. But most importantly, you just don't talk divorce until you talk to us, because it makes me just nervous. Thank you. Thank Madam you. Chair, uh, can I, Irene, uh, thanks for getting up and talking, because you've been on solid waste and you have been on the city. If I could just ask one quick little question. What do you think the single most important function the Solid Waste Authority does? Single most important function. Compr uh, protecting our environment. The trash at Kellogg Beach, the trash that when I moved here was on the road. I used to see sofas when I drove in. I don't see sofas now. Hazardous waste. Thanks. My trash cans. I just want you to know, my trash cans are beautiful. My two new trash cans, I am recycling 50% more since I got that trash can. I am, personally. I'm taking it to heart. So thank you. Thank, thank you for asking. Tim Mitchell. Good morning. My name is Tim Mitchell. I live in the county. So far, the solid waste management has done a very good job. Uh, the closing of the dump, the, what I see on my regular trips out to the um, transfer station, that place is well done, well maintained. Uh, I've never had a problem there. The employees um, are always friendly and happy to help. But I'm always concerned about the budget and the money. Um, I have to live within my budget and live within the money I have. Most of the Board of Supervisors meetings, the other meetings I've come to, that's the main topic. It's not whether somebody's doing a good job or not. It's not a political attack. It's the dollars. It comes down to how much money we're going to have next year, or next week even. I would like to see the ad hoc committee formed. I would like to see it even expanded with more citizens from just general and large. I will volunteer. And I would like to see it formed and if the management needs to be reorganized, fine. If it needs to be left the same, that's fine too. I think anybody that's on the committee needs to go into it with an open mind and take whatever findings at heart and you know, leave the political stuff out of it. Uh, I don't always agree with any of you up here, but I always have the opinion that you have the right to your opinion and disagreement is just something that happens in our society. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Next person. Carolyn Stars. Everyone I've talked to is angry because no one has told them why this issue has come up in the first place. They're against an ad hoc committee because of the kind of power it has without citizens' input. And that's about all I have to say. If anyone could please tell us why this issue has come up when the solid waste management's already been investigated, it's working fine. If it works, don't fix it. That's what they're thinking. And they're angry. And they're getting groups together to campaign in the next election. So that's all I have to say. Thank you, Carolyn. Next person, please. Linda. Here. Yes. Hello, um, my name is Linda Arisman. Um, I just wanted to say that, um, in my opinion, the Del Norte Waste Management in Del Norte, yeah, if I can talk, um, it's been working very well. Um, I've lived in a lot of areas in the country, and I paid a lot more for my waste removal, if I even had waste removal. And there was no recycling involved. And recycling, I'm I feel, feel is very important to this society that we live in. And um, I don't feel that uh, it is really very expensive at all. I, played, I paid double when I lived in New Hampshire. And uh, you had to pay even more than that when you, if you wanted recycling. So I feel that uh, it's working very well. And I don't see the reason for this ad hoc committee um, I just feel it's unnecessary. It's been done already, 
And um, well, to me, the definition of insanity is to keep doing the same thing over and over again and to hope for a different result. And I just don't see why we should, we have too many other issues to worry about. Thank you. Thank you, Linda. Joseph Aliotto. Aliotto. Uh, Joseph Aliotti, I live in the city. Uh, good morning, board members. Thank you for allowing me to speak. Um, the recommendation to create a solid waste ad hoc committee, I believe, is a waste of our limited resources. The grand jury already reviewed this solid waste authority, and an ad hoc committee created by this body was used in the past with no recommendations made. Why, again, another committee? Uh, my contacts in banking tell me there is a lot of money to be made in garbage. I hope the money made is used to recycle as much material as possible and create jobs. N uh, not to make a profit for a few people. We all use products uh, left behind by parts, excuse me, we all use products that have leftover parts that need to be disposed of properly. Let's concentrate our efforts on the common goal of keeping our area free of long-term waste. Uh, for many years now, the Del Norte Solid Waste Management Authority has been effective in its efforts. I like using their website as a resource of options to recycling. Information like this is very important to any community to help maintain sustainability. Information about composting, hazardous waste disposal, and smarter, uh, shopping smarter are some of the options available for me and others to use. My household rinses, then recycles all plastic and glass containers. We recycle newspapers, magazines, and a lot of paper. I use canvas or fabric bags when I per that I purchase for use when I go shopping as much as possible. I hope all future meetings of the Del Norte Solid Waste Management Authority are public, including agenda, minutes of past discussions, and decisions. Uh, and where public comments are welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Joseph. Patty McCleary. My name is Patty McCleary, and I live in Hayuchi, California, and my supervisor is Supervisor Sullivan. Thank you, esteemed supervisors, for giving me some time to share my thoughts with you on the formation of an ad hoc committee to address the Solid Waste Management Authority. I strongly oppose the formation of an ad hoc committee uh, for these reasons. It's the wrong forum. It's not public. No minutes, no notice. We don't want to discuss important public issues in a secretive manner. It's my understanding that the Solid Waste Management Authority has, the issue has been reviewed and vetted, and that the first committee approved of its performance. And I would just like to offer that in these times, we don't live in a world where we can do everything twice. We can't have this meeting twice. We can't do the budget a second time. Let's say we don't like the budget we have, let's do it again. We have to work smarter in the months and years ahead. And when we contemplate a world where we're gonna just continue doing the same thing again and again, they're just not the resources, your time, our time, and it's just not cost effective. Uh, I have personal experience going to the transfer station, bringing green waste and attending the hazmat roundup and I, I, I love my trash cans too, it's a whole new day and I can agree that the county I used to live in, we did pay double what we pay here so I feel that the costs are, are very, very favorable and I appreciate that. I have uh, final closing comments on the notion of privatization. The math really doesn't work. <clears throat> Privatization includes a profit component that makes decreasing the cost of services even harder. When you have a, a, a public entity that's managing and delivering services, they're doing it and taking what would be profit and plowing it back into the venture. You privatize something, that margin goes into someone's pockets. And what we found across America is the track record nationally for privatizing traditional public services is dismal. It is, it is not an effective strategy for delivering important public services. 
I thank you for your attention thank today you. and thank you for letting me offer my comments. Thanks, Megan. John Mertz. Hi, I'm John Mertz. My first reaction on saying this is what again? And then my second reaction is what is the real motives behind this? I think, you know, the county, excuse me, solid waste is run by a board of directors. If the county is dissatisfied with it, I think the appropriate solution is for them to appoint new people to be their representatives on the board. And the board is responsible for running that. And so I see no need for this. Thank you. Thank you. Grant Werskall. Good morning, Supervisors. Uh, I want to echo one thing uh, that uh, Irene mentioned, is I really do very much appreciate the extensive hours and work in so many different disciplines that you all do. It, it's a service that goes way beyond whatever compensation is provided, and uh, I think it's very important, and I appreciate what you all do. Um, to get to it, I would not support another ad hoc committee. I agree with Richard Miles and the string of other speakers that it seems like redundancy. Um, I would also have to say, uh, echoing comments that you've heard from others, that um, we're really proud of the service from this part of our community. And I actually use it more than I think probably any other department. I think with building and planning and then solid waste management authority with the transfer station and then the service, of course, curbside. What a great, you know, the people in those agencies, uh, it's a pleasure to work with them. They do a great job. We're so well served. So I think those two parts of our county that I have the most interaction with, simply outstanding. And I just think it's fantastic. The only, there's been one comment that I've heard in my neighborhood in Hayuchi about service, and that is because we do periodically have a bear problem. Um, the idea of a little later pickup in the morning of garbage would be attractive because what we all do is we put garbage that would attract bears in our freezer. Grant, and then, you need to bring that to the Solid Waste Management Authority Good meeting. point. Okay. <laughs> and, and, you know, um, and, and the way this all came up on the agenda, I think I share some of I, Irene's comments, that I just appreciate it when you all <coughs> can set the model for us about how you work together to really make it then work for us so that we can be efficient in coming and, and supporting what you do. So I think sometimes, you know, picking up the phone or, you know, being transparent among you would help us. And, and again, thank you for your service to us. Thank you, Grant. Andrea Wadsworth. Hi, I'm Andrea Wadsworth. Um, as a customer, I always told my husband as a stay-at-home mother that I wanted that job, that I thought that it would be the coolest job ever. And my husband kept telling me that I was crazy. And I said, no, I really like people. I worked at Fred Meyers for 14 years, and I finally applied for the job and got it. So I want to say that all my customers out here, I help them. I tell them you can throw it all over and make those poor men dig through your trash to recycle, or you can, I can help you by you saving money if you would do it my way. I'll show you how to do it, and if it's faster and efficient and it saves you a dollar, I will show you how to do it. But if you want to throw it all over, you're going to pay the price. So I'd like to invite all you guys out on my shift and come see what I do every day and how much my customers Brookings, Gold Beach, and Oric love to come see me. So I would like all you guys to spend a day with me. Thank you, Andrea. Thank you're, you. Th this is whether or not to have an ad hoc committee. Not, your, your job is not challenged here. It, it's not affected by the solid waste management well, authority. Well, uh, I'm she is opposed to the hawk. I do not want okay. no more. I work there. And yeah. I don't want to be hawked on anymore. Okay. I feel threatened on it. Yes, she's right. Yes. Mary Wilson. Yeah. 
Um, good morning. I'm Mary Wilson from Ocean World, and I, I do have a business in the city. And I'm not exactly sure about the ad hoc committee, what the, what the best way to move forward in, in continuing to assess uh, uh, the solid waste authority would be. Um, I do believe, though, there is a constant need for um, to, uh, of assessment. And the reason I've gotten involved uh, here recently, I'd, I'd kind of like to pass this off to uh, the board members here, is uh, um, um, a chart by the Thank you. And uh, Basically, it was uh, the, um, my billing that I received here in June. My um, recycling rate went from $21 a month up to $252 a month, uh, $3,000 a year to recycle cardboard um, at Ocean World. And uh, um, also, my uh, trash rate went from $400 to $660 a month. So all in all, from $421 a month, the service has gone up to $912 a month for a business to have their trash handled and taken out. Um, so what once in, in 2003 cost $3,500, today would cost $10,900. Mary, and this is something also that should be brought up to the Solid Waste Management Authority uh, board not not this board where he, this discussion is whether or not to form another ad hoc committee. yeah I believe that uh, um, I get I don't I'm not exactly sure the um, advantages of an ad hoc but I do need that this uh, know that this needs to be continually looked at again from 3,000 up to ten thousand nine hundred dollars a year is a three hundred percent three times the rate from 2003 so I hate to imagine what would happen over the course of the next five to eight years with our rates. This is the history. I, as far as my files, I've got their rate cards back to 2003 and plenty of bills to look at. So again, my concern is that it, it does need to be continually um, um, assessed by you as our, our board of supervisors as far as the rates because it affects all of us um, businesses and and again you know when you wonder where the jobs are when the money's going out to pay for garbage you don't have uh, money to hire so that's just a phenomenal rate increase thank you Mary Wesley Nunn Good morning. Just a few things you might consider. Um, it's my observation that most of the folks in the audience here are people who can afford to be here. I don't think that the uh, lower income folks are very well represented in this meeting. Um, please consider them. Um, I think Richard Miles had a good point about the solid waste task force. Maybe that's considered a standing committee already in place. Um, one of my biggest concerns, and I'm sure no lawyer, but um, conflict of interest. Uh, the people who brought the motion and the people who, the person who seconded it, um, seemed to me to be in direct conflict of interest as far as the continuing existence of the uh, solid waste. And I would hate to think of a motion that gets passed and then winds up being void on its face later. Maybe, uh, may, perhaps county council can give an opinion on that or something like that. Thank you. Thank you, Wes. Connie Morrison. Um, yes, uh, I agree with Wes. Uh, what he just said, um, in front of me, I have the uh, response of the grand jury for the debacle that we had with the waste uh, water treatment plant. And one of the suggestions they made was uh, that the current and future city councils should be more attentive to public perception of existing and potential conflicts of interest and be willing to air and resolve such questions openly and on the record. I think that's very important. Um, uh, the <laughs> 
being able to figure out what is going on through looking at the newspaper. And uh, what I heard was um, some people who are, are on the board, they sit on the board of the, uh, the garbage uh, place, and they get paid anyway. They get paid to sit there on the board. Now, I don't know if the board then votes for them or get, if they get a kickback. I don't know where that conflict of interest is. But I do know that somebody made a comment that Mr. Sullivan got $9,000 for sitting on a board. And he came back, this is from the triplicate, I guess, saying that you donated that to charity. And so this perception of a conflict of interest is real, real heavy duty in my mind. I don't know what it's about. Connie, would, you need to standpoint whether or not we should well, if, if I understood, committee. if I understood what an ad hoc committee, it, somehow on the ad hoc committee, it said you shouldn't be getting a three hundred dollars to sit there, right? They don't. That is a completely different. That's Solid Waste Management Authority uh, committee. We're talking about an ad hoc committee, another ad hoc committee to be formed to, to decide whether or not we should even go forward with more discussions. So I should be discussing about more discussions about what? Well, would be appropriate. Okay, what I want to say, I came from the Bay Area, and I agree with the other lady who said that it should not be a privately owned uh, entity. Okay. That way, that takes care of all of your problems with the rates going up and out of sight. Uh, the the uh, embezzlement issue with the other board, uh, some woman was just accused of embezzling. I know when Kelly was mayor, there was a... a oh, th this has nothing to do with... It has everything to do with it. Not, it not has, with whether or not we form another ad hoc committee. It has to do with the people's money and how it disappears and how you all are in charge of it and the perception of a conflict of interest. Thank you. Paul Dillard. I'm Paul Dillard. I'm from the county. I was on the ad hoc committee. Uh, the confusion here is whether the services are, are the board. And I'll make it clear. None of the services change. It's all about the waste management board, whether we need this level of bureaucracy. I wish that some of the people up here that get up to speak would address the issue that they're on the task force or have been on that board before, uh, but they chose not to. And, and I'm sp specifically speaking to Irene Tynes that she cherry picks which group she wants to tell you she's been on. Uh, the ad hoc committee was formed by the, by the board, and at that time the city was offended that they weren't advised. And Sullivan contacted. Rob Butler, and I don't know what other city council, and asked them to come on, but they were in their point of being unhappy about not being in the original decision, knowing this was even going to come to fruition, so they wouldn't come. So that's why the city wasn't there. Uh, during the ad hoc committee, there was, uh, there was only four people on that committee that were uh, independents. It didn't have any touch to the county at all, county board. The interference came from the people that was on there. And, and I'm not taking this personal, Martha, but, but it, you were on the board. Mike was on the board. That's why we didn't come up with a recommendation. Four people was on that board. One just finally drifted off and wasn't there because he, he became involved in other issues. But the three members, and I've spoke to all of them. I can use their name. Wes Nunn, uh, Rich McClendon, and myself all recommended that the solid waste be looked at clearly to be dissolved. How come this don't come out? All right? This is not coming out. And, and introspection into government is a good thing, not a bad thing. And the comment made about things continuing all the time, well, you don't discontinue it. You've got to look at it. Now, I can live with the fact if the board stays, but I want it looked at. And I want it looked at by the city and the county. And I'm tired of what we turn this into. It is a disjustice to the people of this county. You have turned this into a political football and it's not what it's meant to be. We need to evaluate whether we need a board. And that's the whole thing. And I don't think you need it. I support 
the creation of the ad hoc committee, get the city, get the county, bring it to, in the end, to a joint meeting of city and county, and let the people have their say. Right now, you just got to select the amount of people. Hold these hearings in the evening, and we'll fill that room. And you won't hold it here. You will have to go to the culture center. I mean, not the culture center, but the county grounds. And that's pretty much where I'm at. This thing's not going away, folks. Three of you are up for election. I'm not threatening you. I just know that this is going to be an issue. And we need to do the people right. Let's look at this thing and do it right. If it needs to stay, let it stay. Thank but you, it's Paul. not happening now. We have no more speakers? No. I will bring it back to the board. I guess I'll start because there were some misrepresentations, but the importance of the ad hoc committee, again, is that I feel that um, this issue has been vetted. Um, a historical reference for those of you who want to publicly uh, declare my position on an item, if you look into the records, um, when we rated the applications for the franchise service, my number one application, my number one rating was for Recology. And when the vote happened, it was rejected for Hambro, and then it went to Recology. But that was not, so for those of you who want to know, be on that ground, I just want to clarify that for you. I also don't know where the information comes from about Hambros because Hambros lets anybody who wants hang a sign and that's their level of contribution. So I just want to make that clear. I also would like to make it clear and read that there were other, other um, ad hoc members. In fact, Don Olson was an ad hoc member and said dissolving the JPA, the current JPA is running very effectively and there's no reason to dissolve this JPA. Just look back at the last operation of our landfill and recall the number of sanctions against the County of Del Norte in the area of waste to appreciate the effectiveness of this operation. I would hardly call that someone that is asking that the JPA be dissolved. And then when I look at Rich McClendon's paper, he says after reviewing the numerous documents and options, I believe it would be unwise for the county or the city to unilaterally laterally withdraw from the joint powers authority. Um, that's two, and I could also read mine, but people probably know where my position is on that. And then there were two others, members of the JPA, that also put forth information. So what I'm asking is that it, it's, a, it's a pinnacle of choice that either A, it moved to an ad hoc committee that is relatively inexpensive to function. It requires staff to attend and participate, but it doesn't require recordation, it doesn't require agenda sizing, and it doesn't require public meeting. The minute you move into a standing committee, you end up having <coughs> the requirement of staff to be in attendance, the requirement of recordation, the re requirement of posting the minutes, and then you're starting to spend money on that. And my position is, is that we have a, we have two franchises that are working, and I would be glad to independently talk to anyone about how the rate structure is set and when it, when you can anticipate increases. And we have a system that's working, we have a community that likes their service, and we have oversight of an, of an essential service that every community in California is required to have. If we have a separate entity, the city will have to have a waste study, the county will have to have a waste study. Currently with the two, we, have, we are allowed by the state of California to have one waste study. So our uh, oversight comes through one funnel and that's why I am in opposition to this yet another look with an ad hoc committee. When the ad hoc committee, granted there were members of the ad hoc committee that may not have been happy with the outcome, but the ad hoc committee did not support to dissolve. The ad hoc committee supported an as is. And I believe that going down this road yet another time only delays the important work that needs to be being done in this county. Thank you. Any other comments from? You can't. No, it does no. not. You, you. I'm going to bring this back to the board. Yeah, I'm going to have to say something, I guess, here. Uh, it's not about, I think there were some good comments by 
darn near everybody that spoke, regardless of what side you were. Richard, Solid Waste Task Force is an excellent idea, and it is underutilized, and it should be fully staffed. I think you're right on there. It's not about service. That was said by several people. It isn't about service. It's what it is, no matter on what side you're on. Solid waste, not solid waste, straight in the middle. The one common theme is you want voice. And as long as there are people in the audience that don't feel that they were given voice, and as long as the other governance structure refused voice because they got their feelings hurt or weren't properly invited, whatever, that they weren't there to give voice, the only way you're going to be done with this is to allow voice to happen. And that's something we all agree with. So I've heard ad hoc, I guess I wasn't aware of the fact that you didn't have to agendize it and you didn't have to take minutes. That's not good. Okay, so perhaps an ad hoc is not the proper one. But I would ask Martha, because of the way that it's going to be perceived, to withdraw her motion to not have an ad hoc and rather let's get a positive direction, albeit direction and not motion, to convene some meeting that is agendized in public with meeting, uh, with uh, minutes, and that includes the city, that allows for public comment. Let's get this heard and be done with. It is not about service. Okay? Uh I'm just going to say a couple of things, and I, I agree with you, David, that uh, this is uh, this is certainly not about um, necessarily about the service. This this is about protecting your interests, and is this a level of bureaucracy that needs to be there? That's just my question. Maybe it does need to be there. I I don't know that the uh, I think that by leaving the city out, uh, or by the city choosing not to be right. participate um, in this, I think I think. The, the whole thing becomes flawed. Um, so, and I don't, you know, I don't think any entity or, or agency should be afraid of being looked at, ever. As a matter of fact, I think they should welcome it. Um, so, especially by, by another public agency to be looked at. I mean, uh, you know, what, what are, are we hiding something? Are we afraid of something? Um, you know, and uh, I, uh, I, I have to just note something that Patty McClary said about we can't do this twice. Well, we're doing what we did from the last meeting. We're doing this again. So we are doing this part twice. Um, but, and I'm not picking on you. I'm just, I just stuck out. Uh, you know, I, I, I don't know what the fear is. Um, I, we're just trying, I, I'm personally, I'm trying to protect the public interest. That's what, that's what they come to me with. This was a concern of theirs. Um, and it becomes a concern of mine. Um, we're just, I mean, I'm just trying to protect your interest, and is this a level of bureaucracy that we need to have? That's the only thing that I'm interested in, and maybe we do need it. Thank you, Supervisor. I, uh, I would reiterate that we, what most of the board members have set up here is not a question of the service. Um, so, Emmy, uh, the, the Waymasters have been great at solid, anytime I've used the transfer site, Waymasters, you guys have done a great job. Um, the Recology collection, no complaints about them. Uh, Hambro's hauling, no complaints about them. The question is the board. And there were recommended changes in the original uh, report that was sent to Solid Waste, and basically we were shined on on the response. Uh, one of the issues was stipends. And also the second issue was budget. Both are money issues. And I, I think at this point, there are recommended changes that need to happen with, with the Solid Waste Management Authority. Once again, I'm not talking about the service. We're talking about an authority board that, you know, quite frankly, at this point, is non-responsive. The, the public is, is upset right now, and it, their fees continue to go up, and they will continue to go up because their budget's still not in order. They still have not anticipated the potential fall of waste going across the scales due to recycling. And that was part of the franchise agreement. How can you not predict that you're going, to lose, you're going to lose tonnage going across the scales and not base your budget on it. So this board in particular has, every time that the director has made his presentation to the board, has made recommendations to address these issues in their budget. They have a problem. They have chosen not to. The only time they've done it is they jacked up the fees here recently to, to make up for their shortcoming. So I think having the city involved is crucial. I, I contacted the mayor at that time twice 
to, to invite the city to sit on that original ad hoc. I think they're, they're essential. They are the second part of the Joint Powers Authority. But I think when this board sends questions and, and recommendations to the Joint Powers Authority and they blow you off, then there's an issue. Now all of a sudden the two parent boards are not getting a response from, you know, basically the, the Joint Powers Authority. That's wrong. Because quite frankly, each of us here are elected to this board by the constituents in our area, as well as the city council. That board is appointed. It is not elected by the people to sit on that board. So to me, to, to sit there and put like an ostrich with your head in the sand and not address the real issues that are going on with that Joint Powers Authority is, is wrong. Oh, sorry, Amy. I'm just, no, it's not, not you. Sorry. No, it's not, not you. Yeah, no. No, 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 no. No, Amy, and I'm sorry. I just got to start looking in that direction. And anyway, I, I, Andrea, I apologize. It's not, not directed at you at all. I think, I think the, that's, that's why my motion last week, which followed all protocol and, um, and I don't see, if it says possible action in regards to the solid waste, uh, the response of solid waste authority, that's an action in response to their response. It's form an ad hoc. If you guys can't fix your problems, then the two boards that help found that entity need to do it, period. Right, exactly. I just feel it's gonna to have to be done through city county uh, meeting where the public is invited in. If they're not gonna to come to- I, I agree. Uh, let's, if they're let's, not gonna come county, to I, ad hoc committee meetings, right, then we need to do it through the city county meetings and um, I will give direction to, um, oh, pardon me? We have motion on the floor. Oh, okay. Call the question. Supervisor Finnegan? No. Supervisor McClure? Yes. Supervisor Hemmingson? No. Supervisor Sullivan? No. Supervisor McNamer? Yes. Okay, I'm, uh, now that the vote has, has taken place, um, there was a serious, because there's no way to abstain from something like that to call it a tie, I think that in the discussion, what we all realize is that the ad hoc is not the proper venue. Right. Okay. So I want to see a positive direction to have that communication with that other government inclusive question. and to allow for public input. Question, is the ad hoc committee that we already voted on the last meeting still in place? Yeah. Yes, right okay. now it would okay. be, so, a motion would need to be. Well, what I would like to do is to see, to accept direction to put that on hold and have communications with the city. So we could delay the meeting. So it, it has to be a, a partnership to listen to what the public wants to say. Okay? It's a partnership government. Both governments have to be involved. So nobody's Stop. feelings are hurt, and so the public is confident that the correct message is being received. However you decide to do that, that's what we need to do. That's what the people demand. Well, if the ad hoc committee would agree, we will put in its actions or meetings off until we, um, can can uh, request a city county meeting with the city so i would request that the meeting happen sometime in the next six to eight weeks otherwise i don't want this floating on forever uh, that's the problem better have a single agenda item <laughs> yes yeah. that, that, there, yeah, there will be one pizza <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll, i out of frustration i will support that but i will also tell you that there's over there's over i don't know about 800 pages to review the people need to understand the iBank loan, people need to understand the structures, people need to understand the franchises. So people need to do some homework because it's not just, you know, people kvetching, claiming that there's been a 5% increase or there's been this or there's been that when that hasn't happened. Instead of doing that, they need to actually sit down and carry the water. And that's what sometimes when it gets all inflamed isn't happening. And I want to tell you, I've carried the water on this thing for a while. And I know that the people on the ad hoc committee know the outcomes of dissolving this and what it means. And I'll just remind people that even in an amicable divorce, you end up with lawyers, you end up spending money, and somebody in the end feels that they were screwed. 
So just to let you know that that's what I, it But I, let, me, let me just go back to the motion I made. The motion actually calls for re restructuring or dissolving. Um, no, this is no. from last week. Oh. Not making a new motion. The actual okay. motion said restructuring or dissolving. Mm -hmm. Restructuring is a really big key thing here that could happen here. So let's not just assume we're jumping, going from zero to 90 miles an hour. There, well, there is an in-between there that could very I well happen. I think it a step further. I think that the verbiage there was to look at, yeah. uh, which allows for leaving it the same. Right. For not doing anything. And I think that anybody who wants to presuppose what my vote's going to be is crazy. <laughs> Um, I would agree. You that. know, I just think that there has not been, you know, and same could be said for Martha. Uh, right. <laughs> but, you know, I, I think that's what has been brought out is that people feel that the information and the, and the communication was not there and whether it was or whether it wasn't. As long as you have disenfranchised people, you need to get the governments together and let the people be heard. And I support that. Yes, I do. Okay. So I will direct that then, Jay, um, to try to set up a city county meeting um, in the very near future. Single agenda item. And the ad hoc is on. Okay, this item is closed. No. No. <laughs> We're going to move to budget budget transfers. Wait. Well, I think we should. Rich, yes. you can, Rich, you can bring it up at yeah. when we have this joint city county. Yeah. You can bring it at this joint city county meeting, or bring it to the Solid Waste Management Authority meeting. Absolutely, that's where it should come from. Yeah. Okay. Budget transfer. You're taking the stipends. <laughs> Approve a budget transfer in the amount of two hundred ninety-five thousand zero twenty dollars. I uh, need to inform everyone that. The original number in in that um, budget transfer was a typo. I was glad to see it uh, went down about seven hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> it's a pretty big typo. Within the Health and Human Services budget, as requested by the Director of Health and Human Services. I move to approve as corrected. Second. I have a motion and a second. Would you pull the vote, please, Chairman? Supervisor Could I ask some respect here? We are finishing conducting a meeting, ma'am. Can you shut Ma'am. Excuse us. Excuse us. We are trying to finish conducting a meeting. Thank you. That's for public. I have a motion and a second. Is there any public comment on the budget transfer? Item number 17. Hearing none. Jeremy, we have a motion and a second. Would you pull the vote, please? Supervisor Finnegan? Yes. Supervisor Sullivan? Yes. Supervisor Hemmingson? Yes. Supervisor McClure? Yes. Supervisor McNamer? Yes. Do we have any legislative and budget issues? Yeah, I think we covered the budget issues, didn't we? I think Supervisor Finnegan went over a lot of the legislative issues and yeah. regarding the bills before the governor right now. I, you know, it's, it is worth noting, though, and, and Supervisor Finnegan would, would definitely back this up. Both. Both of our state representatives went to went to bat for us on that. Uh, the state responsibility area is the fire assessment. So I mean, that that was instrumental in getting that stuff hung up in committee, which is one of the few times I'm glad to see something hung up in committee. Well, and I think that I'm glad you brought that up because uh, Assemblyman Chesbro um, did what was unheard of, as well as Assemblyman uh, Jared Huffman, uh, which was vote against his party, which had introduced the bill for excessive fees. And so they really did represent us. And because of that, it got all the rest of the, and I'm sorry, it's political, Democrats uh, to, to relook at that and adjourn it without pushing it forward. So they, are, they really deserve a letter of thanks, both of them, for it. Well, and I, I think Lamalfa was involved in that also. Oh. I, th I think across the board, I'm it just was. Just telling pretty, you how the votes yeah, come down. Yeah. I would note that during the meeting, I did get a text message from our advocate in uh, Washington, D.C alerting us to the same information that was provided cool. by uh, Supervisor Finnegan. And uh, he wanted to note that uh, Congressman Thompson's office was directly involved. They had tried to bring in, uh, I believe, Senator Boxers, but they were busy with other things. So uh, Congressman Thompson took the lead back there. What bill, 1429? Uh, I don't know the number on that. Yeah, Chespro's bill. No, this was oh. uh, the uh, SRS, or the airport yeah. oh. money. 
the ESA. one that was, yeah, the grant. Oh, the grant. Yeah. Oh. Sorry. Okay, any other questions? Any public comment on legislative and budget issues? I just want to tell you that I have a, I forgot to bring it this morning, but I will um, get a copy for everyone. It's a great little primer on how wetlands are determined. <laughs> yes, Vicki. Hi, um, the, I'm Victoria Dickey. I live in the county. When you were discussing item number three, I thought that there'd be more no, this than is no. just regarding item seventeen. Right. When you were discussing item number three, you were talking about some budgetary issues, and I never heard them discussed. I did want to speak on that, but since this is about the budget, I'll bring it up now. You are. This um, is a budget transfer for a specific department, yeah. Victoria. I thought you were on number 18. No. Well, oh, excuse yeah, me. We are on number 18. Yeah, I'm sorry. We're on number 18. Okay. Okay. Um, the budget uh, will apparently include establishing another district attorney's office uh, position. Um, I read in the newspaper that we have someone who's on administrative leave seems as though there are a lot of people who go on administrative leave and that lingers and lingers and lingers and then we're paying for people who aren't working. Uh, I bring that to your attention because I, I'm, I'm requesting that you, um, ooh, I can't say what my dad would say, or get off the pot um, and either get rid of the person that is on administrative leave or bring him back and put him to work. We're paying for him. Or her. Just a point of information, though, on that new Thanks, position created point. is being offset by Pelican Bay Revenue. On that yes, so we're revenue. not paying for it. I, on being that offset. personnel issue, I can't it's talk on that. But no, no, no. I'm talking about we're not paying for this position. The it's attorney one, be, two, three. Essentially, it's being funded by the state based on the work that we're we're doing um, at Pelican Bay prosecuting Pelican Bay crimes. Okay, so we're just paying for somebody we don't have, but we're not paying for an additional position. No, we have somebody on administrative leave that's paid, according to the newspaper, and I'm saying, mm. Yeah. I can't answer all yeah, that. Yeah, we can't answer any employee. I, I can't oh, I'm not asking you to answer me. I'm asking you to do something. Okay. Thank you. Any other public comment on capital projects? Uh, the boat launch continues, and we hope to have it finished by October 15th. At this point, it is on schedule. Good uh, work. For fishing season, when does it Yes, it would be nice to get that last. That's, that's a very large project, so it's nice to get that one off. The uh, RFP for the uh, Battery Point Lighthouse, I believe, goes out today. Now that we've gotten the final contract in line for construction management. The, uh, we're working with the state parks in regards to the Prop 40 money uh, to finish up a couple of projects and try to explain to them why they may not be completely understanding the ropes course and how the ropes course is uh, uh, made available to the public on a daily basis. So we're dealing with those. And we'll also be looking at some of their comments regarding ADA compliance for the other parks. Uh, and I believe we'll have a solution for them shortly. And uh, at this point, uh, again, a lot of work being done uh, for the county by the crews that are under the tsunami relief money. And the road department is paving the world. They're in my district. They are all over the place. I love it. Blackwell Lane, Railroad Avenue, Adams. I mean, uh, Washington, Concrete on the far end. I don't know. Washington Boulevard is getting some repairs. It's half a railroad's mine. Oh, <laughs> Concrete well, on the island. Be attention because it's yours. <laughs> but has, have they gotten railroad? Because last time I drove just over, there were just they the were north end. Just north end. Okay. It's a work in progress. Okay. Um, but it all looks good. They've done a great job. I have a question that may affect the boat ramp. I don't know. But the Yurok is putting in their final plans for a um, cannery at Requa. I believe, yes, at the uh, RV park at Requa. And an, an additional boat ramp, or is there a boat ramp there? Already? There's a boat there ramp. There is a boat launch ramp. down there. Okay, so they, ours will not be affected. No, no we're, uh, well, I guess that's about a mile and a half okay. upriver from that. Yeah, I was going to say they prefer to use that one, the tribe. The tribe typically is used for the subsistence fishing, the, the Gensaw Landing by the name, I believe. is. But they've used that one because it's, it's better access to the mouth. As they move up river, then they would use town site, and then of course a lot of sport fishermen use Roy Rook as they go further up. River. Thank you. Thank you. 
You know, I've never asked this. Did we have to ask for public comment on capital projects? When, the, when it's Here's informational one. Here's one. We got one. <laughs> Good. You don't have to accept it from Mr. Bernard. You don't have to accept it. I was remiss earlier well, that's what I in leaving out a little grant. Yeah. It allowed me to stick around for the whole meeting, which was entertaining. <laughs> um, we also signed one. the airport two weeks ago a grant for $1.6 million AIP grant to uh, continue the final design of the terminal building and the new layout, and that effort is underway which is all I wanted to bring to you and the audience's attention, but I see we lost the audience, so I'll just bring it to you. But the reporter's still here. Oh. Yeah. All right. Talk to that man. One point six. <laughs> hey, Jim. Okay. Photographer's Hi. gone, but reporter's hey. here. <laughs> Hang around for just a minute, would you, after the meeting? I got some stuff I can give you. In regards to uh, capital projects, uh, a while back there was a uh, group of people uh, who were working towards uh, doing some undergrounding uh, of electrical systems on the Highway 101. And there were some meetings that some people attended uh, with the city and the county. This is several years ago. And right now with the amount of unemployment in Del Norte County, I wanted to bring this back up because uh, it does provide an opportunity to create jobs for people in the local community with money who is in the bank, so without borrowing any money, that can only be used exclusively for the undergrounding of power lines and utility lines in public areas. Uh, what uh, the uh, board, uh, what, what we had presented to uh, this uh, at kind of a committee uh, was uh, doing the northern part of the 101 corridor from the fairgrounds out uh, because there's few sidewalks, only a few people uh, affected. The, it could be done much more cost efficiently and the, uh, of course, there was some confusion with the Chamber of Commerce about the cost because when you deal with high tension lines, it's $2 million a mile to underground. But in that area, there wasn't any. And I'd like to resurrect that idea and see if we could uh, put some people to work. There's a lot of unemployed construction workers. And uh, since that money can only be used for that project, uh, if you could create a utility district or underground utility district like Eureka has done in various areas, it might behoove us to beautify our community and use this money and put some fellow citizens to work. Thank you. Thank you, Ron. This meeting is adjourned. I know.